This video will review the new 31 band EQ found in the Pro model of version 4. With a 31 band graphic equalizer, each band covers one third of an octave. You can work this out from the fact that an octave represents a doubling or going the other way, a halving of frequency. And there are 10 octaves between 20 hertz, the lower number, and 20,000 hertz, the higher number. So on a 31 band graphic EQ, there are three steps between each doubling of frequency. So in other words, if we start here at 20, we go one, two, three, we would expect this to be 40. And indeed you can see that it is. This EQ configuration provides a great deal of control over frequencies and therefore the sound that you hear. To make this EQ compact, we did not label all of the bands, but by hovering your mouse over any of the bands, a tools tip will appear and you can see what frequency as well as the adjustment made to that particular band. Also notice here on the left side that there is a preamp. So this is in addition to your 31 bands over here on the EQ side, a preamp is just simply increasing or decreasing the decibel level. And this might be especially useful when you're cutting bands and you need to pump up the volume to hear the remaining frequencies. Notice too that the gain in the EQ is 30 decibels and the cut is twice that or 60 decibels. Please note that if you increase the gain substantially, it is likely that you will induce clipping and therefore distortion. Also note that if you cut the band significantly, down here below the 30 range approaching 60, it's likely you will reduce the volume very substantially. The next thing I'd like to review with you is the color coding. As you can see right now on the screen, everything is flat and the buttons are gray. But if we grab a button and drag it down, it turns red. So as we cut, the buttons turn red. As we boost, the buttons turn green. And if we disable the EQ, all the buttons turn blue. So that's the basic color coding that you need to remember. I'd also like to draw your attention to this little lock icon right here in the center of the EQ. When you turn it off, as it is now, you see sliders for both the left and right channels, and these sliders can be moved independent of each other. In other words, if I move this one up and down, the same slider down here below it for the right channel isn't locked to it. It remains the same regardless of what you do with the slider above it. However, if you lock the channels, the sliders move with each other and therefore there's no need to really see the bottom half of this and this also puts it in a mini mode which is certainly much more convenient for saving space on your screen and allowing you to work conveniently with this EQ. Bands can be adjusted in several ways. The first way is by grabbing a slider with your mouse. So you put your mouse on top of it, you left click and hold down and then you can drag it either down or up. A second way is to click or click and hold down in the groove in which the slider sits in. So in this particular case, if I click below it, you can see the tools tip is moving down very slowly. If I click above it, you can see the tools tip moving up. And if I click and hold, it moves automatically. Another way in which you can adjust these and you can adjust many bands at once is by right-clicking with your mouse and then dragging your mouse across a series of bands. And wherever you drag your mouse, you'll see those bands move. So here I am right-clicking. Now watch me as I drag. Yet another way to move these sliders is to select individual bands and you can do that by holding the control key down and then clicking on the band. When you do that you can see that the band is highlighted. So I can click and hold down and select one band. I can select contiguous bands, meaning bands next to each other. And I can select as many or as few bands as I want. And Once I've selected those bands then I use my up and down arrow keys and it will move all of them together. And as you can see, we're moving up. We use our down arrow key. We can select those same ones and we'll move down. Now again, just to point out what should be obvious, since these are locked, whatever we do to these on top, we're doing to these at the bottom. And as you can see, we open this up and you can see the bottom ones 
have been moved in exactly the same locations as the top ones. The last area to review are the presets, and you can see those over here in this window. This 31 band EQ is loaded with many different presets. If there is a plus symbol after the preset, and let's look at this acoustic guitar as an example, that means that the preset was designed to enhance that particular sound. If there is a minus after the preset, as there is the acoustic guitar one right above it, it means it was designed to suppress that particular sound. Let me point out that it is not possible to create a preset that works every time for every song and for every instrument type. And that's because every song or audio file is different and what works well on one may not work on another. These presets are provided to you for your convenience and should be used as starting places as you EQ a song or EQ an audio file. The system presets which you see in this preset box as it appears on this screen cannot be modified or erased in any way. However, you can create new presets based upon the existing ones by simply selecting a preset. In this case, I'm going to select Rock Drum. And then you can modify it. Let's say you want to pull these bands down over here in this 16K and 20K. And then if you select Plus, this middle button here will create a new preset. You can give it a new name modified drums click OK and now you've created this new preset you'd notice these two are down here at the bottom let's click something else jazz piano now let's go back down to modified drums and indeed you can see that we've created a preset if you want to save this preset permanently you can do so by simply clicking this Save All EQ Presets button here at the top. If you don't click this once you close this screen, this temporary preset which you've created will disappear. So if you want to keep it permanently, you need to click the Save button. And then it tells you it's saved all the presets. The other thing that you can do with any of the custom presets that you've created, and again using this Modified Drums one as an example, is you can delete any custom presets that you've created. So if we go to a system preset like this one and we try to delete it, you'll see it says, sorry, but that preset is a read-only. However, if we go down to this one that we've made, Modify Drums, and click Delete, it's going to warn us that it's going to delete it, and if we click Yes, it's going to go ahead and remove it. Built into this EQ are some other functionalities to help you arrange these presets in an order that you'd like to have them on your screen. If you place your mouse in this preset box area and right click it, you'll see a submenu open up. The first is sort and it's a simple ascending descending order sort but that will help alphabetically. The next is the show and hide category and as you can see in the menu that opens on the screen here, anything that is checked is appearing in this preset box area right here and anything that's not checked is not appearing and of course you can go through this and select or deselect items to customize what you want to have appear and what you want to hide. The last one is a category screen and if you select the category it allows you to go through and select the groups that you would like to appear on the screen. So in this particular case I've got the basic presets the drum presets and the guitar presets selected. That means that those are the ones that will appear in this screen here. If I go back and change my selection, and we we'll remove these, nothing appears because nothing is selected. And again, if we go back to this same screen and I can select basic, drums, and guitar, then those are the ones that appear. And then for instance, if I go through here and say, well, I really don't want country drums plus and country drums minus, then we can go back to this screen that we had open before. And in here we go to country drums. There's country kick. There's rock drum. Here's country drums plus and minus. And if I deselect, for instance, country drums plus, we go here, you will see that it has now been removed from this list of presets. So these functionalities will help you sort and display whatever 
list of presets you'd like to have on your screen on a permanent basis. Just remember that to save those, once you've sorted them and have the ones that you're going to normally use, you have to click the Save All AQ Presets, and then that will save this selection that you've sorted on your screen, and the next time you open it, those will appear. Next, let's take a look at this EQB button here, the EQ Bypass button. The EQB button is the EQ Bypass button, and it is a bypass button, which means to say that when it's off, the bypass is not working, which means that the EQ is working. And if we toggle it on, this means that the EQ is then bypassed, that it is not working. And several things happen when we do that. First of all, this area over here becomes grayed out and it is not functional. You can't select anything. You can't perform any operations. All the bands here, if you try to grab them, are not functional either. And of course, they've turned blue to tell you, as we said earlier in this video, that they are non-functional at this point. And just to take this one step further and explain it, essentially what we mean is that when this is bypassed or it is shut off, any EQ that you have or may have applied either to the entire song or to a specific loop will be temporarily turned off. So it will play as if there is no EQ applied to it. And of course, once you toggle it off, the EQ comes back on and then whatever EQ you had applied will affect the song and the loops that you have open on the screen. The last thing then before we conclude this training video is to talk just briefly about the use of the EQ and how it is applied in Song Surgeon. And really what I mean by that is that the EQ is a function that works just like pitch or tempo, and that is that we can apply the EQ either to the entire song or to individual loops. And in this case, let's um, set our progress indicator to this particular loop area right here. And so I've done that by clicking down here in the timeline area. You can see the white line of the progress indicator. That means it's within this loop. Let's now go ahead and apply treble minus 10, so you can see that it is applying this particular preset. So what that means is that since we have a loop selected, that this preset is being applied only to the area selected within this loop. And we can tell that because if we go outside of it, you can see that the EQ jumps back to where it was previously. And then as it plays through, once it hits this loop, you can see that it jumps back down. And not only that, but you can see that the preset that is being used is highlighted. So that's one way in which you can know which preset is being used on the song or on a particular loop. It will become highlighted in this preset screen here. The other way in which you can tell which preset is being used, now by that I mean which EQ preset, is that if you go to the Edit button here and select Edit for the loop area, you can see within the loop it's got an EQ setting here and it will tell you which one is selected. In this case, treble minus 10 is what is selected. And if you will recall, if we open this back up, that indeed is what is selected for this particular loop. So that will conclude this training video on how to use the new 31-band EQ functionality built into Song Surgeon version 4 Pro.